Welcome to Illuminati Silver. We tell you the truth about silver. Today is Monday the 9th of November 2020. And in this series, we ask the question, are we reaching peak gold? This is the fifth video in the series where we look at demand, its trend, and what, if any, impact it will have on peak gold. So let's take a look. Now, before we cover this week's episode, just a reminder that episodes 1, 2, 3 and 4 are listed below. In episode 1, we highlighted the issue of technology and whether gold could be extracted cost-effectively, together with some theories of how gold originated in the first place. In episode 2, we gave a definition of peak gold, as defined by Wikipedia. In episode 3, we identified which were the 10 largest gold mines in the world, which between them produce enough to satisfy total globe demand for three years. Obviously, it's spread over a longer period, but could be condensed into three years total supply, thereby allowing smaller mines to take up the slack, so to speak. So what is likely to be, hopefully, at least 20 years further supply before we start seeing serious diminishing returns? At least that's according to to the World Gold Council. In episode 4, we quoted an article by Provident Metals, which provided its summary of the peak gold position, and one that was, to be fair, laid out quite objectively in our view. Now today, we're again quoting the World Gold Council, which frankly is one of the better sources of information on gold demand and supply, and we're looking at recent gold demand trends, including the huge support that gold and gold-backed ETFs have given to the gold price. And what may now happen in view of the rate of increase is now starting to decline. So let's take a look at both of these articles. World Gold Council report dated 5th of November 2020. Headline, Global Gold-backed ETF Flows, October 2020. Gold ETF inflows continued, but at a significantly lower pace. Gold-backed ETFs and similar products, gold ETFs, recorded their 11th consecutive month of net inflows during October, matching the record number of positive monthly flows set in April 2006. Gold ETF holdings increased by 20.3 tonnes. That's plus 1.4 billion US dollars, or 0.6% of assets under management, during the month as the gold price moved mostly sideways, finishing slightly below $1,900 an ounce. Net inflows of 1,022 tonnes, worth 57.1 billion US dollars in 2020, so far have driven global gold ETF holdings to a new all time high of 3,899 tonnes, the equivalent of 235 billion US dollars. Positive inflows continue during October, albeit the lowest monthly increase in 2020, as most risk assets like stocks were lower on the month. Nearly all the net inflows came from European funds, which added 20.2 tonnes, or 1.4 billion US dollars. North American funds added a nominal amount of 1.8 tons or 166 million US dollars. Asian funds had small inflows of 1.1 tons or 76 million US dollars. While funds listed in other regions experienced significant outflows relative to their size of 2.8 tons or 1. Point, sorry or 144 million dollars. Daily gold trading volumes fell meaningfully in October to 159 billion US dollars below the year to date average of 186 billion. This was largely driven by lower COMEX gold future volumes, 29% below the 2020 daily average. Net long positioning via the recent commitment of traders report for gold COMEX futures showed stable positioning 
at 766 tonnes. Well below the average in 2020, but still above the long-term average. Short-term implied volatility in gold, or the expected future movements, increased from 17 to 20. Not unexpected ahead of the US election, but put call skew remained relatively flat, suggesting no expected directional bias in future prices. Global uncertainties remain as gold demand trends continue. The official US election day came and went, but uncertainty over the results will likely to continue for some time. As we recently noted in gold in the US election, the fundamental support for gold investment demand is unlikely to change regardless of the presidential victor. Our quarter three gold demand trends highlighted a common 2020 theme. The global pandemic continues to hurt the economy, which in turn is negatively impacting consumer demand for jewelry and technology. On the flip side, investment demand primarily through gold ETFs, remain strong. Given the recent uptick in global COVID-19 cases, geopolitical and market uncertainty, and the expected long-term, low-rate environment that improves gold's opportunity cost, we do not see this scenario changing in the coming months. World Gold Council report dated 29th of October 2020. Headline. Gold demand trends... Quarter 3, 2020. Quarter 3 gold demand, 19% lower year-on-year year at 892 tonnes. Strong growth in global investment demand for gold in quarter 3 partly offset weakness elsewhere as COVID-19 remained in the driving seat. Demand for gold dropped to 892.3 tonnes in quarter 3, its lowest quarterly total since quarter 3, 2009 as consumers and investors continued to battle the effects of the global pandemic. At 2,972.1 tonnes year-to-date, demand is 10% below the same period of 2019. Although jewellery demand improved from the quarter two record low, the combination of continued social restrictions, economic slowdown and a strong gold price proved onerous for many jewellery buyers. Demand of 333 tonnes was 29% below an already relatively anemic quarter 3, 2019. By contrast, bar and coin demand strengthened, gaining 49% year-on-year to 222.1 tonnes. Much of the growth was in official coins, due to continued strong safe haven demand in Western markets and Turkey, where coins are the more prevalent form of gold investment. Quarter 3 also saw continued inflows into gold-backed ETFs, although at a slower pace than in the first half. Investors globally added 272.5 tonnes to their holdings of these products, taking year-to-date flows to a record 1,003.3 tonnes. Central banks generated small net sales of gold in quarter 3, the first quarter of net sales since quarter 4 of 2010. Sales were generated primarily by just two banks, Uzbekistan and Turkey, while a handful of banks continued steady, albeit small, purchases. Demand for gold using technology remained weak in quarter 3, down 6% year-on-year at 76.7 tonnes. But the sector saw a decent quarterly improvement, as some key markets emerged from lockdown. The total supply of gold fell 3% year-on-year in quarter to 3 to 1,223.6 tonnes, despite 6% growth in gold recycling, with mine production still feeling the effects of the half-1 COVID-19 restrictions. Highlights Quarterly inflows of 272.5 tonnes took global holdings of gold-back ETFs to a new record of 3,880 tonnes, while the pace slowed a little from half one, sustained inflows throughout quarter three demonstrate the continued motivation of ETF investors to add to their holdings. The US dollar gold price rose to a record high of $2,067 an ounce in early August. This was followed by a correction with the price closing the quarter around $1,900 an ounce. 
Record high prices for gold were also seen in various other currencies, among them the rupee, the yuan, the euro and sterling. Bar and coin investment jumped to 222.1 tonnes in quarter three, up 49% year on year. Most major retail investment markets saw strong growth, though the largest volume increases were seen in Western markets, China and Turkey. This contrasted with continued strong sales in Thailand. The pandemic further impacted the jewellery sector. Weakness caused by COVID-19 was compounded by record gold prices. Quarter 3 demand fell 29% year-on-year to 333 tonnes, while China and India accounted for the largest volume declines. Weakness was global. Central banks generated modest net sales of 12 tonnes of gold in quarter 3. This was the first quarter of net sales since quarter 4 of 2010, primarily due to concentrated sales by two banks. Buying continues at a moderate pace, driven by the need for diversification and protection amid the negative rate environment. End of article. So, what can we glean from this and the other information provided in previous episodes? Well, first of all, there is no shortage of gold within the Earth's crust. Secondly, the issue is that what economic reserves are there which can be mined within a reasonable gold price with existing and future technology. Estimates for economic mining ranges from 20 to 30 years, accounting for continuing gold demand and supply trends. The issue of recycling is becoming increasingly important to make up any potential deficit, at least in the short to medium term. Now, in the very short term, we can see that if it were not for ETF demand, then frankly we would be in a position of considerable oversupply. And one has to ask, for how much longer will ETF demand continue? And for how much longer will jewellery demand continue to fall? One thing is for certain. While gold prices remain high, and assuming they move higher, then the costs of mining and recycling proportionately falls compared with revenue, thereby releasing potentially additional resources to mine even more. Now, whilst none of us have a crystal ball to predict the future, there's no doubt in our minds that the case for gold, medium to long term, is good to strong. And unless new major resources are discovered, which can be mined cost-effectively, in 20 to 30 years' time, one could only hazard a guess at how high gold prices will likely be. For sure, considerably higher than they are now, regardless of what may happen in the short term. So, our final conclusion. We're not necessarily in a state of peak gold per se, but we are in a position where higher prices are required to ensure gold mining can continue to meet existing demand and potentially future demand trends, providing they continue on their current trajectory. Well, we hope you found this series of interest, and next week we shall be publishing the first in our series of Peak Silver. So until then, thank you so much for listening. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to our channel. Not forgetting to press the bell sign so that you're notified of our videos as and when they are published. And a brief reminder that we have a sister channel called Richard and Greg, where Greg and I discuss topical issues of the day. And hopefully you'll subscribe to that one too. We hope you have found this video interesting and informative. And if so, please give it a thumbs up and share it on social media. Please ensure that you have subscribed to our channel and press the bell sign so that you are notified of any future videos. Also kindly visit our website at IlluminatiSilver.com and if you haven't already done so, please subscribe either as a free or paying member for regular email updates and offers. Disclaimer. Illuminati Silver owners come from a background of banking, international wealth management and economics. 
Having now retired from these worlds, we are not qualified to give investment advice. Therefore, this and other productions must not be deemed to be giving such advice and merely represent the personal views of its owners. Thank you.